Welcome everybody to our Saturday webinar. Today is the 30th. So I will wa want to welcome everyone and today we have 25 people here. Um, so I hope this helps everyone to be able to jump in and ask their own questions. So please do. Um, and once you're done, please allow others to jump in so we don't have to ask anybody's questions and like that the entity doesn't have to get confused if they have a follow-up question so um, please do try and, and jump in um, I believe there is space I'm not sure um, I would like to thank Jim for doing this webinar for all of us for the enrichment of everybody and to help everybody uh, become more aligned with themselves. And uh, hello, Jim. Hi, how are you? <laughs> great, great. How are you? Good. I'm doing very well, thanks very much. Okay, it's so... It's a beautiful day here, so I love it. Yeah, I had... My, mine was... I don't know. It's, there, there seems to be some clouds, but it's, it's nice. Um, let me introduce the people over here on this side. It's uh, Valerie, Sharon, Shirley, Sheer, Shin, <laughs> Sam, all S's. Um, <laughs> who is that? Peter something, I can't read it. Uh, Michelle, Jasmina, uh, Mark, Christine, Blue and Bianca. So welcome everyone and Jim I will uh, pass the mic on to you and you can introduce the people with you. Yes, um, I have other people coming but right now it's Barbara's here, um, Angie's here and uh, Raymond's here and of course I'm here. So, but uh, hello everybody, it's um, welcome to <coughs> Saturday morning webinar. So it's a beautiful day today. Yes. Does anybody have anybody uh, that they want uh, 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 to come in today that they're wanting to come in? Um. Let, let, get, can I uh, first uh, introduce Mark to everyone? He will be. Oh sure. Um, helping today, and I want to thank Mark for that. So everybody say hello to Mark and thank you. Hey, um, Mark. Hello. I think it's important to to thank the volunteers. So, um, also, um, Mark, do you have any announcements? Uh, let's see. No, not at the moment. I think I'll save them for the end. Okay. All right. So he he's going to save the announcements for the end. Um, before we go into the entities, I would just like to uh, say a few things here. Um, please uh, keep in mind that now we have 25 people and we would like to get through everyone. Um, we, we have two hours, um, so let's try and be brief with how we word our questions. Um, try and keep any background information as short as possible. Thank you. Um, and um, and have fun, you know, H have fun and and um, let's try and, and keep the personal questions more in in private sessions. Um, let's let, because when we do, even when we do a personal question, but we do it in a general sense, everyone can benefit from it. Exactly. So if you have a personal issue um, and you word it in such a way that everyone can benefit from it, so now everyone's benefited and you benefit it. So, so that also works. So just you know, try and keep that in mind so, so that everyone is being helped at the same time as you are being helped. So on that, then... Um, the uh, let's let's see this here request for an entity. 
I would say an angel is always good. <laughs> yeah. Sheer has requested Solomon. We, uh, we've we already gotten that one. Nefertiti? Nefertiti was in the room. Someone asked for Nefertiti. Oh, Nefertiti. Yes, that would be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, go right. ahead. Christine requested the Queen of Sheba. Oh, okay. And um, I would be interested to see what the unnamed have to say about the economic crisis at this point. There is a there is a collective called the unnamed, or they go, they don't go by any name, so they <coughs> everybody calls them the unnamed. But if they come, they will not give you a name because they do not want labels or names attached to them at all. So uh, they are a very interesting group. Okay. I've, mm. Oh, Lakesh! Someone asked for Lakesh. Oh, Lakesh! Yes. I so Shirley. Shirley? Yeah, yes. Oh, Shirley asked for Lakesh. Okay. <laughs> if Tucker yeah. can come, I would like to ask a question. To Tucker. Anybody else? Uh, my friend uh, Matanel wants Eric Einstein or uh, King Solomon as well. Who was the other one? I <clears throat> Uh, Ari Einstein, it's a singer who passed away, or uh, King Salmon as well. Okay, I don't know who Eric Einstein is, but he knows who he is. Though. I vote for Nefertiti also. Can okay. I say something? Okay. All right. I, I just feel like I just feel like saying this to all. Um, since there are so many people here, I just feel like. The energies are a little imbalanced. If everyone could do a blessing to just bring yes. the energy together and balance it, it would be great. Well, it just feels like a hurry and too soon. Thank yes, you. Yes, I was going to do a blessing uh, before we start, so that's good. Does anybody yes. want to lead lead in that? I can do a blessing. Excellent. Very good. It's best to start with a, a blessing, and he's right. It balances everything out. It protects everybody. It makes it gives a greater extension to a more positive session. So it's beautiful. Okay, I'll I'll start. Nahram pate gerie kete ne ne me kete yese totolo. Nahra hama kataria maheke keria pakaolo no mo. Nahra hama kataria kete ne heke teria beketa yoso yokuto. Kuturi yomo kohola kaora ya mahaba kataria patane kete. Heke teria nana na eseseria pakaola yo pokuturi yo pokuturi yomo no. Ente teria hapa kataria pakahala kataria nene keteria seseria pato eteria mahaola kata. And in the aura, a is a se iriata aula yoniko. A he e ito oro yo moholo koyo, a tahari apakata he e ketene e se se ita ari. Anna e e ikite ira oro no oso. Okay, thank you. Let the Spirit of God land on each of you and help you to calm and be peaceful, to expand your light and to move it into a greater area of understanding and existence. Make it help you be more joyful and more understanding of the path that you are walking upon. We are all together in the light and share the dreams that you will come to join us soon. Much love to you and we give you great blessings and support. That was it. Thank you. All right, and um, I, I feel much better now too, thank you. But um, I'm going to uh, take a small meditation and bring someone in, and we'll see who comes first. I'm not sure who's coming today. Um, it's been one of those weeks that there's been a lot of angels, there's been a lot of um, unusual beings this week, 
that have come through uh, with interesting and a very interesting and wonderful wise messages. So I'm just going to leave it open for those that have the most positive messages for the most positive uh, reinforcement of all people to come in. So much love to you all and I will do a short meditation. Hello, how are you? Hello, Lakesh. Yes, it is I. I have come because I have not been here for a while, and I do miss talking to you. And it is a wonderful time in the in the lives of your people. There are many of our people now starting to speak to you more than usual. We had six at one time. Now there's like eleven that are now speaking to the earth through their different means of communication and channelings. So our population is becoming interested in your population and how to be a greater guide and to help you move forward in a greater way. So we are loving that and we are inspired by your people because they are moving forward. Of course, right now there is a great deal of confusion and a great deal of ups and downs in the earth energy and in the earth emotions. Uh, every now and then things will flare up but they will calm back down but it is because all the energies in the body, all the emotions are being stirred up so one moment this emotion will be on the top and the next, motion, uh, next minute a different emotion will stir up because that is how the en energies are moving but do not be dismayed it's, it's a, actually a calm period before we go into the, uh, the fourth dimensional energy field, whatever you want to call it. Some call it clouds, some call it fields, call, some call it other things. I'm not sure exactly. It's just an anomaly. It's, and it eventually will become sentient. So it will be a life force eventually because there has been plasma or plasmatic sort of uh, existence found within it. So it is just evolving into a, a sentient being. But at this point, it is not. It is just energy at this time. But it will be a, a most interesting being once it comes around. So, But I imagine when it comes around to Earth, the next time it probably will be mobile and it will be on its own and I don't think that it will want to pass through any solar systems unless there was a reason for that. So um, at this point, we are just seeing that it's the beginning of a sentient life. However, when it passes through your area, through your solar system, it will bring a lot of fourth dimensional energies to you, bring a lot of closeness of uh, timelines. So that's all we see. We don't see that it's going to really harm anyone except for maybe uh, give you a few visions of this and that and also uh, juggle up your brains a little bit because of the different distortions in it, the great pulsations, movements. Some of them are side to side and others are up and down, so we don't know what to expect about those pulsations, if anything, because you do live in a moving um, energy field. so. It may not affect you in any way whatsoever, but I know that you're seeing a lot of uh, Mandela effects, they're called, or 
uh, deja vus or little glimpses here and there of other timelines. I think that that might increase, but I don't think that anything else will pop up. I do not hope. So, any questions for me today? I am here because it is just a lovely time, and our people are just enjoying a very calm and restful period in in our history. We are advancing, of course, but it is um, a time of reflection and a time of celebration of many, many things. So we are very happy about that. Hello, Lakesh. Welcome. Hello. How are I you? I miss you. Very good. Very good. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, what's the best way for us to deal with the polarity that it's happening right now? Um, because it can get a very unnerving for some people, and actually, yeah. I see there's there seems to be a lot of conflict happening uh, within small yeah. groups. Yes, and I, I was saying that is the energies being stirred up. The different energies stir up different emotions. Is that as they're still uh, moving around and settling? One day you you might feel anxious, or one day you might feel joyous. One day you might feel a little irritated. But just um, make sure you're doing a daily routine of meditation to keep yourself balanced, and some prayers to keep yourself balanced because this is the way to handle it. You have to stay in a balanced and grounded form. And many of you have been doing all right with it. I know that there's been some flare-ups uh, with some people in some groups. And I know that some people have been feeling the changes, and but they have been handling it quite well. Other people are protected from it. There are a few in your group that have other protections from other species that will keep you... Uh, uh, your fourth dimensional energy clear of this agitating energy, agitative energy. So um, those of you that have that uh, are quite um, blessed in some way. So um, because you will not find that you are going to have all those ups and downs. But keep yourself balanced and grounded, and that's the best way. Also, a meditation doesn't hurt. Because if you start to feel too much anger or too much dissatisfaction or anxiety, then something could flare up. Okay, thank you, Lakesh. Um, uh, Michelle has a question. Ah, Michelle! Lakesh, I'm so excited to see you, hear you. I'm oh my excited. God, I love you so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? And your husband well, slash wives. <laughs> I am very well. Thank you very much. Oh, good. Um, wow, I really just am so happy to feel your energy. Yay. Um, Yay. It's been a long time, and a lot's happened since we last spoke one-to-one. -one. Yeah. And earth energy is very interesting for us as well. We feel the, the earth energies and how it's increasing and changing and I can feel each and every one of yours energy and as it blends together it makes a very interesting beautiful energy it's like um, energy therapy for us a little bit beautiful. it's like we are dissecting the thought processes and the energies that come to us some of them are very positive and some of them are very uh, neutral and some of them this and that and the other but it makes a very good uh, it, it is not unpleasant to feel that kind of energy coming it is rather wonderful lovely so I've been noticing that um, a lot of people have just been popping wide awake and even in my own family um, yeah. um, just bing 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 like popcorn um, and um, so Sometimes when this happens, people are immediately inundated with the ability to see or speak languages, hear um, beings, etc. Just like a huge onslaught. Like I'm a normal sauce person one day, and then Bing, like now I have all these things, and it's very big. I mean, it even depends on the individual, but yes, right. So, I, I mean, maybe okay. So. He, I had a friend that 
that also happened to. And so I have a lot of friends. And what I've been seeing is that how they start knowing things in their mind, but then they find out later it was wrong. How do people discern, for instance, I had somebody explain to me that Jesus and Mary Magdalene really wanted me to open up and they would let me see things and hear them if I would just lay down and do what they said and it was really insistent and it didn't feel right. So I was like, well, it's I don't know why it doesn't feel right, but you know, Jesus isn't a punk. Like he's not going to not be there for me tomorrow if I change my mind. So you, sometimes there is an entity there, but they whoever is channeling them do not get the names right. They're hoping and uh, for certain people to come through and so if they ask for these certain people to come through whoever comes through they'll put those names on them even though they didn't ask the entity their names. So, so discernment. Yeah. Therefore they said it was Jesus and Mary Magdalene but it could be Romulus and Terracuta. But right. you never know and they have different ways of dealing with things. And so, yes, it, it may not have felt right because you know how Jesus and Mary are in yes. your own personal thought process, what they are to be like, who they are as the people that you know them as. And if these entities were not like that, it wouldn't feel right, of course. Now, not to say that these entities might not have good information and be able to help in some ways. Mm -hmm. But they were not Jesus and Mary Magdalene. They were indeed someone else. But th these people were asking for those particular entities. They were not ready to channel those particular entity entities, but they put those names on them. They didn't ask for their names. They told them their names when they came through. Oh, this is Jesus and Mary uh, Magdalene. So it... But it was not. Do you right. understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. This is so, what I want. I want to just bring this up because sometimes people, I mean, the information is not accurate. Especially <laughs> when people are new to doing this. Yes. Especially when people are brand new. They need to get a handle on it. They need to, to have some prayer and some time where they understand what is happening. But what is the reason for these entities to be able to come through. Why is it that this channeling has opened within them? And they cannot just take it frivolously. They cannot just say, oh, I have this gift now. Let's, let's, let's use it and not be prepared for it. Um, but some people were given gifts that they were not prepared for. But the entities that they want are not coming through. And the How reason is they're, they're not prepared. So you must let them know that some grounding, balancing, and meditation is necessary. It sounds like the same thing for the, the moods. But it is true that okay. they need to understand that this is a very big responsibility. It's not just a frivolous thing. It may be fun at times, but it is not a frivolous responsibility. Channeling is a very serious responsibility because it is the way at this time that greater information from the universe is coming through to humanity. And it is coming through quickly because humanity is rising quickly and needs to be prepared for things that are coming. And without these channels that to be used responsibly, it cannot come through. So those of you that are out there channeling, make sure that you are being responsible and that you are doing a meditation, bringing through and even question the entities that are coming because some of you are very protected and other you, uh, others of you are normally con connected or protected and you need to be careful. You want only the best and most useful information to come through. So is there a way that they can discern because they feel like... Yes. Well, let me tell you what you should do. Okay. You see, before they have come, before they channel to you, mm -hmm. you have to say, 
let's have a time of prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, let's bring this into a spiritual situation so that when the entities do come through, they can be of a, a nature that I can understand. Because obviously these were not resonating with your truth. So therefore you need to start with something that resonates with all. A prayer will bring you all into one mindset if they are willing to do that. Mm -hmm. It will bring them all into a, a particular mindset. But isn't it somebody being a trickster um, to say they are one thing when they are not? Or is it just the, no, they the, not, the they human mind that. doing it? They did not say who they were. The human put the names on them. They did not. They did not trick you. Okay. It was the human that put the names on them, and they just went with it because they figured, well, maybe that's the way it works here. Okay. Somehow, some beings think that um, different rules apply. So you have to let them know to let them name themselves. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, for that. if 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 they were to name themselves as Jesus and Mary and they were not who that was, then that is a trickster. Okay, because the person I'm speaking about said, who are you? She, at least in her perception, she said, who are you? And they said the names. But I know what they feel like, and it didn't feel like what I know. I understand that. So. Perhaps it was a trickster then. Okay. But if they did not, if the... If they ask who they were and they gave a false name, that is a trickster. So what does the person do then if you get a trickster? You have to evaluate uh, your presentation. You have to evaluate that you, who you're bringing in. And, and you have to make sure that, that you meditate beforehand and bring in only true spirits, true beings that want to help and be a part of a greater good. All right, thank you. Lakesh, you're welcome. I love you so much. Love you so much. <laughs> Mark? Oh, I didn't have a question just yet. Oh, okay, Valerie? Hello, Lakesh. Valerie, how are you? Oh, very well, thank you. That is good. I have a, a question today that has to do with um, dealing with those who aren't quite aware of what's going on with the energies. Um, yes. In the last week, I had a couple of, uh, of meetups with different people, and for really some strange reasons, uh, actually talking about love is what put them into an anger uh, frenzy. And basically, they just blew up, you know, like um, a lot of emotion and um, because of love. some screaming, things like that. So is it the energies that are causing this, or is it uh, the fact that maybe I don't speak correctly to them? Can you answer to that for me, please? Well, let me ask you a couple questions first. First of all, what about love made them angry? I was talking about unconditional love and forgiveness. Yes. And, and, and that made them angry? Because they could not have it? Because they could not show it? Or because they didn't believe it existed? I would say because they couldn't show it and maybe don't believe it exists. They're, neither, neither party is awake at all, so... I wow. see. So therefore, when talking about love, yes, these energies could cause um, signals to be crossed and different things of that nature. And you, no matter what you're talking about, actually, it you can get an explosive response because it's just the way it is right now. However, I find it interesting that you thought that it might be something that you said. It was not something that you said so much as something that they felt. They were feeling 
um, that you were maybe judging them, and you were not judging them, I'm sure. But they were saying, I can, I, that is not who I am, basically, isn't it? Um, it, it could be, yes. Um, some, some of what I was trying to say is that uh, if you yourself have done something that you're not so proud of, and you want to be forgiven for that, um, and you have been forgiven for that, then, yes. then you should be able to find that same unconditional love in your heart for another one who may have done that same thing. Absolutely. And yeah. this made them angry? Well, yes, it did, and it surprised wow. me. That surprises me as well because it makes very much sense. It makes sense because what is, is, is this then? I see it very clearly that they have unforgiveness and they're not willing to get rid of that unforgiveness because even though they have been forgiven, even though they feel that um, maybe they don't feel that they've been forgiven, but you, you were telling them that they were, they're not willing to forgive these other people for the same kind of things that they have done themselves. And so therefore they are lashing out and saying, I'm not ready to forgive yet. I'm not ready to, uh, to learn how to forgive yet because I'm still very angry about what they've done. I'm still very angry about the situation. But you see, that is not an advanced thought process. That is one of holding on to um, the same old thing and letting your life, letting your emotions rule your, your life instead of you ruling your emotions. This is something that Earth has got to learn and it causes so much trouble and so much anguish and pain and sickness and uh, everything that is negative comes from hatred, fear, and unforgiveness. So it is that they are not ready to, to embrace that which you are speaking of, and perhaps they felt a little jealous of that, that you were able to embrace it and talk about it in such a calm and peaceful way where they're not even able to embrace it in their thought processes because it's just something they have so much anger about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, and the thought came to me that it might be a little of unforgiveness for their own self. Even yes. though, like, I have forgiven, doesn't yes. mean that they've forgiven themselves. No, and they have not forgiven themselves. And if they learn to forgive others, they will be forgiven. That is what the Bible, your Bible says. However... God is already forgiven in many ways. You understand that, right? Yes, yes. Thank because you so much. he loves you and he does forgive you. And if you forgive yourself, that is, a even, that is even greater because then when you're looking out from yourself, <coughs> when you're looking out, you are looking purely through beautiful eyes. <coughs> Yes, thank you so much, and namaste. Namaste, and I understand that that could be a very disconcerting conversation. Um, I would like to ask if, if anyone in the room with Jim has any questions, or, La, you know, with Lakesh, because, well, Lakesh is not there, but um, otherwise I have some questions from some other members. Is there anyone here that has a question? Yes, yes there is. Hold on. Speak into the microphone. I would uh, <coughs> like any more clarity and guidance on forgiveness and how to forgive because that is one of the main things that I'm working with. I understand. Some people, and including yourself, but you're not alone, but there are some people that do not know how to forgive. <coughs> One moment. Jim needs a drink of water. <coughs> Thank you. Excellent. 
There are some people that do not know how to forgive because they cannot forgive themselves and the pain is so deep that they cannot reach out for to forgive others because they feel like that person has hurt them so horribly that they cannot forgive them. And the answer to that is you have to learn what love is. Do you even feel love? Do you ever understand love? Do you know what love is? Do you know that love is giving and kindness and goodness? Do you know that love is a feeling of warmth, of happiness, of showing your gratitude? Love is so many positive things, but but if you cannot, if if you have so much deep hurt and pain and unforgiveness, these positive feelings are often not there or hard to find or in, in very small abundance. So therefore, when you find that you can love, when you find that there is something about that person, you can look and see this other person, some good qualities in them, some reason to be with them, some reason to forgive them. You must look for these things. It's not just going to pop out of you because you're really not trying to see them. You're holding on to these energies that are grasped grasped onto your soul, into your to your system because of something that happened. Now you need to be able to release that. And you say, that is the part that I'm having the problem with. The part that you have to, you, what you have to do is recognize that this is something that needs to be released, first of all. Second of all, you have to want to release it. If you don't want to release it, you're not going to. If there's some reason in your life that you want to hold on to it, then you're going to hold on to it because you do not want to be nice to that person. You do not want to forgive that person. You don't want to. You just don't. You see, you must want to feel a forgiveness. You must want to know that things can be all right again. If you do not feel that way or do not understand that it can be right again, that's the other thing. If you don't think that it's ever going to be right again, what's the use of doing it? The use of doing it is for your own self. You need to purify yourself. It does not matter if the other person changes. It matters if you change. It matters what you feel, how much you love, what you are going to be doing. Because if you have a ministry, if you have a way to move forward, if you have something that you need to do in your life, that is important to mankind, you cannot do it with these kinds of feelings in your heart, not to the fullest extent. You must release them. If you really want to be a successful light worker, a beautiful person, you must release all the anger and hatred and forgive yourself and forgive others. It, it does not work properly otherwise. You will find that that you will run up against somebody that's going to just make you crazy if you do not know how to handle what is inside your own self. If you are not in balance, if you are not grounded with everything that's within you, you are going to be lashing out and that's not going to be good. You are going to be feeling bad things. And that's not going to help you on your journey. You must release them. Forgiveness. And it is not an easy thing. It's the hardest thing in the world to do is to forgive someone that you don't like. If you don't like them, it's hard to forgive them. Why? Because you don't really want to. But you have to. 
to in order to love the God in them. Every person has God in them. Look at these people as if they're God and find their beauty within them. Find the love. Find the, the things that are common with you within them. And if you can't find it, still find the God portion because it's there. It's always there. Every human has God in them as a soul. So when you find that portion, love that God part of them. And so that may help you to release these things that are within you that need to come out. Oh, of course, you'll never get rid of 100% of your anger, your fear, your sorrow. It is, uh, there is some remnants of that always because you were in the third dimension. However, unless you leave the third dimension and, and move to a new dimension altogether. But that does not mean that uh, you're going to because you're born to third dimension and you have to stay in third dimension, at least for this lifetime. But you can visit fourth dimension, fifth dimension. That is possible. But remember, you're doing this for yourself as well as for them because you will be relieved of so much anguish, hatred, sorrow, pain. And many of you, I know many of you say, oh, I have aches and pains. And it's from holding some of this fear, some of this hatred, some of this anger, resentment, and things of that nature into your body for so long, it needs released. It needs it, it, it takes a life of its own as disease, as pain, as sorrow, as anger. It turns into anger and hate also. So, does this help at all? Oh, yes. Very good. Is there any other thing that I should clarify? I know that it's, it's not an easy thing. And to s explain it to each person, each person is individual on how they deal with what is inside them. Each person is an individual. You understand that. But there are some things that are universal. And that is that anguish and, uh, and these negative feelings cause many problems. And they will continue to cause problems throughout your life until you start to shed them, until you, until you start replacing these things with something more positive. Um, Lakesh, can you also speak of knowing, even, even when you have forgiven the person, knowing yeah. when to let go of them? You must Actually, when you forgive them, you do let go of them in some ways. You let go of those parts of them that were hurtful. You let go of those parts of them that were not resonating with you. Now, if it's necessary to let go of them altogether, then you must look at them in that way. If, the, if I continue to hold on to this person in this certain way then th it's going to bring this onto me or bring that onto them look at them and balance yourself it's not necessarily that you have to let them go but you have to let yourself go you have to understand who you are enough to be secure to let everything go so that it holds on to you and you don't necessarily have to hold on to it. But, you see, in human society, everyone is connected by the soul. And so you are all holding on to one another, no matter if you, if you think so or not. So feel free enough to let go so that you can understand why you felt that way, because... If you don't let go, it's too close to look at sometimes. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, but, but sometimes 
um, it happens that the, the person keeps wanting to behave in the same manner that they have in the past. Of course. Um, so that's that's what I'm saying. Discerning, you can lovingly you can, let them go can. to allow them to be who they want to be. Correct. There is no way you are going to change their behavior except through your example. No words that you say, no thoughts that you can give them. You see, you can give them all the words in the in the world, but if they do not see that in you, it makes no difference. If they do not see that that is an example of who you are, then it will fall on deaf ears. So their, their change is not important. It is, but it isn't. It is important for them more than for you. Your change is what helps them to change. Because they see the example, they know who they are, they'll either, either embrace it or turn away from it. You do not have to hold on to them if they are not being helpful, if they are not being the person that they should be. You can let them go. Does it mean you don't love them? Does it mean you don't care about them? Does it mean you don't pray for them every day? But it does mean that they are not affecting who you are in the sense that when you're holding on they're directly able to get to you. If you let them go a little bit you can see them for who they are and accept them out there but not accept their negativity into your life. Okay, thank you Lakesh. You're so welcome. You're um, welcome. So I have a question from uh, Leander Villarta, and he says, "I was wondering if there's a message for me, especially about my anxiety disorder. Um, I guess he's struggling with that. And if he wants to know, because if, if he ever travel again, like far away, because." He has anxieties about uh, getting into a plane, train, ship, that kind of thing. Yes, I understand what he's saying. Do you know the basis of anxiety is fear? It's it being afraid that something is going to happen, that something is going to do something to you, or that something's going to happen to that particular object that you're in that will affect you. Now, why does that affect you? Because you have seen all, all the different things that happen to people all over the world at different times, different places, different situations. What is it that makes you feel this anxiety? You want to be safe, you want to be secure, and you want to be able to be confident as a human being because these kinds of fears and anxiety are very destructive because you cannot live a normal life and move out and help others if you're feeling fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety are destructive. You must learn that God is protecting you. It is one of the reasons why you have fear and anxiety is because you don't believe you're at all protected. That anything can happen to you at any time. Must protect yourself. Must bring yourself into a state of security. Must bring yourself into a state of love. You must love yourself. I know you don't trust the world. And you go, it's not me. I like myself, I love myself, it's the world I don't trust. But how are you going to effectually change the world or be part of the world if when they look at you they see fear and anxiety? Your example must be of truth, love, confidence. And, and this disorder, I know it comes from the kind of the world that you live in and all the different things that you have seen, heard, and experienced. And it's part of now your belief system. 
You believe you are not safe. You believe that there is a necessary need for this fear in your life so that you don't do certain things or don't put yourself in harm's way. Your belief system is damaged. What you need to do is realize that your re reality and that your experience is telling you what to believe. Your reality and your experience is telling you what to believe. And that is sometimes false. You have lived through, through many things. Oh, yes, it was real. But is that all there is to your existence? Is that all there is to your life? Is that all there is to the world? Is these fears and this feeling that nothing is safe? Is that what the world is about? No. But it's what you've been around. It's some of the things that you've experienced. And you need to understand that love, understanding goodness, kindness, virtuosity, integrity exist in a very safe place. Now, of course, you can walk out in the world and anyone can feel unsafe. But if that's the way you're going to feel, you won't be able to live a prosperous life. It will be one of great fear and anxiety, one of great terror at times. You have to be learned that God is protecting you, that he loves you, and he has a reason for you to be there, not to feel fear and anxiety, but there is a purpose in your life, and to become more of who you are so that you may understand that he is guiding and directing. You may not see that now, and you may not feel it, but he wants to guide and direct. He wants to. You may not be letting him, but he wants to guide and direct. He wants you to feel happy and free. He wants you to feel confident and safe, even though the world may say you're not. But if you live your life in a beautiful, confident, loving way, it's going to be a much better life. And guess what? There's not that... Around every turn, there is not something horrible unless you bring it to you. The law of attraction brings horrible things to believe. Those who believe horrible things are going to happen. And wonderful things to people that think wonderful things are going to happen. I'm sure you are aware of the law of attraction. So do not bring fear and anxiety to yourself even greater than it is now. Believe God when he says that you are protected and that you have a life to live and that it should not be unhappy. He doesn't want you to live in fear. That is not something that he wants. Why do you want it for yourself? You may not want it for yourself, but yet you have chosen it because you are afraid. You cannot abide. You don't trust anyone. You don't trust anything. If you trust anyone or anything, trust God. You don't have to trust any people, but trust God to know that your safety is secure. And perhaps that will help you eliminate this fear and anxiety because fear is at the base of that. A fear, a, a horrible, learn, a nagging fear to do anything at all in some situations. Um, is that the way you want to live your life? I don't think so. Yeah, Lakesh and I would also say that um, he's only seeing one of the possibilities. So just as things could go in that direction, they could also all go well. So he's of course within well, his I, mind. Uh, he, yeah, he's only choosing to see one of the possibilities. So it's 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 a choice to a certain extent. 
um, that is happening within his mind at the moment that he's choosing to see everything that way. Let me point this out though. To him, it does not feel like a choice. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't. It does not feel like a choice. It feels like something that is. Right, but, that is imposed, yeah. But it is a choice in the sense that he is not giving God a chance. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Jess444 four, 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 um, says hello. Um, they want, I believe it's a she, um, wants to know uh, if there's still negative reptilian energies around. And if so, uh, can you ask them to leave? I can ask them to leave if they are there. However, they do have free will, except that if they're trying to do something negative to you or move in a negative way, then they, I can get rid of that. That is not... But if they are positive, then I will let them go. But let me look at the situation. First of all, not all reptilians are bad. And I'm hoping that you're just not assuming since they're reptilians, they're bad. I don't think do so. I don't think so because she also asked about um, about a past life in which uh, she's a reptilian. Ah, all right. Very good. In that case, one moment, let me attach to her. Or him. I'm not sure. I never know with human energies. I get them confused. Some Some male energies have a lot of female in them and a lot of female energies have a lot of male. I'm not very good at distinguishing. And plus the fact that we are very much, we like both men and women, so it doesn't matter to us. So I think that's part of the reason I have trouble. Okay. <laughs> yes, there are, there is a negative reptilian around her and one moment and she has had reptilian past lives this particular ne negative reptilian was she has slighted in a past life that is why he's there now he is not an alien he's not in um, physicality he's in spirit so he's a reptilian spirit and he is has been slighted by her in two lives ago, in when she was a reptilian, he, he wants her to apologize. So, uh, or him. I'm not sure if this is a her or him. I don't. I don't feel male or female energy really very strongly. So, um, all that you must do is apologize to this entity, and he will go. It is a male. The male spirit is in spirit is a male. The reptilian in spirit. There is another reptilian around you that is not evil, but more of a, a guardian of sorts of this particular not so nice reptilian. The reason why he's so not nice is not really because he's evil, but because you have done him harm in a past life and therefore he wants a, 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 an apology. So therefore, that is what I see right now. Okay, yeah, because she, she had asked if you could um, talk about any positive aspects that she can draw from that past life of yes, her as a reptilian. Yes, apologize. What it was in the past life is that reptilians have a... Uh, well, I don't want to say any, I don't want to be negative about the reptilians because some of the things that they just do in their everyday lives seem, may seem negative to people and may seem like un, uh, uh, not very nice. However, it's just the, the way of their culture and things. However, sh this particular person when they were in the reptilian culture went out of their way to do something not so nice to this particular one and he just wants an apology and he wants um, to know that they 
they didn't really, if if they really meant that, that they take it back. It was something very unkind. And so, okay. therefore, yes. But there is much positivity in that life as well. I'm not saying that. I do not even know if you did this thing to them on purpose, but they felt that it was. They felt it was intentional. It may not have been. Because of the way reptilians are, I, I couldn't tell you. But this person definitely felt slighted by it in a very bad way. Okay. Thank you, Lakesh. Um, you are welcome. There was another question. I don't know if you ever heard of um, Essence Quantic uh, Homeostasis. I don't know uh, if you ever... Uh, you may know it by a different name. What is it about? I don't know. It's a code system that works on the soul level to change information as emotions. Interesting. Uh, it is a is it a group of people? Is it a spirit? No, I, I guess it's a it's a system. That May works. I speak? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is a system created by a Brazilian guy, and it's about you. They have this code which you speak to your soul. It could be like, dear soul, the fear I have about something, erase it, and it just goes away. It's very good. It's worked perfectly. Oh, I, is something I mean, created by a human? Yes, it is. And it is about the human soul, perhaps. Yeah, he may speak as soul, but it can be your consciousness or your higher self. I don't really know. I just heard of it a few days ago. This, I'm not aware of this particular way of doing it. We do have similar things here. We do not call it what he calls it, of course. But I do understand what it is. It is a, re a it's removing emotional problems through the soul. Yes, something like that. He, in his view, everything is information, and if you know how to work with this information, it can alter his reality. Yes. So he can cure well, everything. And... Is, what he's saying is everything is vibration. Information as vibration, the vi information of vibration. And if you can change the vibration, you can change anything. Because everything is of vibration, and that is information, actually. But, and it is also mathematical, it's also many things. You can call it information, vibration, uh, algorithms, whatever it is. If you learn how to change it, then it can change the the being. If you if you can reach in and find the vibration of a particular emotion and remove it with vibrationally, it will be removed and it will not be there any longer and cause great deal of comfort. Yes, indeed. Lakesh, may I ask another question? Of course. Uh, a few years ago, about one, I had a vision when I was meditating that I was in the middle of a lot of crystals. I was in a circle of crystals and they were very big ones. And there was yes. this red crystal in particular that I felt like he was talking to me. I felt that all yes. those crystals, they were entities and very powerful ones. And this one, they, he was just there like trying to pass me something. And every time I feel in fear or something, I recall this feeling, and it's very comforting. Yes, there is a Chris, There are crystal entities that have sentience and can speak uh, in ways uh, telepathically and psychically. They are um, on different planets. There are several different crystal entities. They don't move about about a lot, but they can. They have learned at this point to. Uh, move their vibration, just as we were speaking about uh, changing vibrations. That's how they move from one place to another. They picture their vibration in a different place and they go there. And uh, these crystals are speaking to you about um, your own life path. You were uh, many, many millennia ago 
uh, with the, these crystals, the you planet where the most advanced of these crystals live, and so you are part of their existence, and and they are coming back to you. You were very kind to them, and they were uh, and they were very kind to the people. The people have, after realizing. Uh, that they had sentience and understanding were very kind to them and lived in harmony because they needed different things of course and neither one of them um, came into uh, any conflict with one another so it was a beautiful thing so yes they're telling you about your future and that right now your path is changing and it is becoming uh, a little more spiritual and a little bit higher vibrational. Well, thank you, Lakesh. You're welcome. Of course thank you, you are. <laughs> I am not sure if everyone has a side uh, chat on, on their, if they're on their phone. So um, does anyone have any more questions for Lakesh? Hi, do you hear me? It's Sarah. Yes, we hear you. Hi, Lakesh, how are you? I am very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Excellent. Um, I was wondering if you can see into a vision I had this morning. There was a tree on fire. A tree of fire, maybe. Um, do you a know? Tree. And what else was in the vision? I just saw myself circling around this tree of fire. This is a representation of something in the... Uh, there are beings that are, that are like this. You remember the burning bush back in your Old Testament of yes. how the burning bush spoke to one of your prophets. I think it was Moses. But anyway, yes. Yes, there is such a species that looks similar to like a burning tree uh, the smaller ones are like burning bushes. What it is is uh, radiation coming off of the the bush that looks or the tree that looks like fire. It's not actually really fire, but it is a radiative glow of some sort. But there are these. Uh, there is a, a species that looks very much like this and are very very old and very 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 knowledgeable. What were they saying to you? Do you remember? It was a quick flash. I was awake. From them. What is it? I was awake at the time when I saw it, and it was a quick flash. Ah! They're trying to communicate with you. Usually the messages from this kind of being are very wise, very, very uplifting, and uh, very futuristic in some senses. Ah, okay. I guess that's awesome. If, is there any message they have for me, maybe? Or if not, I'll just leave it be. But. One moment, please. And I, I do not actually haven't spoken to them for quite a while. But um, if you would like me to get in touch with them, I will see what they're trying to say, if anything. That's wonderful. I'm Thank sure, you. I am sure that they, if they are getting in touch with you. A, they want you to know of their existence. B, usually they have a great message. They just do not come places without a, a great message. Just like the burning, what was called the burning bush. It was yes. a bush that radi was actually sending off radiation. Wonderful. Ah, very well. Is there any more questions? Or um, do you want me to go? No, I was wondering if you were able to connect to them to see if they had the message. Ah, one moment, please. Thank you. It's you. Ah. They are going to be connecting with others in humanity as well. They have the same message for many people. What? Let me see what it is. Usually then when they come, they do have a message.
message for a group of people. And that was what they did the first time. They're saying this message is important. Get to it. The things that are coming in the near future, many will be affected by things that are coming in the near future. And they want you to know that these things most people are protected from in, in a great deal of ways. However, there is a portion coming at the later part of the year that will be very uplifting. Having going through these very dark times in October, September, October, November. There is some dark things happening in that period. But they are going to send some uplifting information and uplifting energy at the end of this period so that people will feel refreshed. refreshed. One moment. They would love to learn how to connect with your fourth dimensional energy a little better. They're a fifth dimensional, or that's how they are saying it. I don't know mm -hmm. really what dimension they're in. Very well. Mm -hmm. But they are trying to attach more to the energy of Earth to bring them more messages of hope and understanding where there is so much destruction they see all the things that have been happening on your planet and are very sad, but they do not want you to be discouraged or be afraid to live or be afraid to do anything because the chances of you being involved in any of this directly at this point is very remote. Mm -hmm. Those that will be affected it is meant to be. But they would Thank like you. to bring and attach closer to fourth dimensional energy on your planet and and so far they've been able to attach to you Sarah just slightly there and there and about 15 others on the planet and they're going to bring the same message to all of them for this time. Mm -hmm. They are also going to reconnect very shortly again to um, hopefully many many more and people will see this as a spiritual connection they will see it as the burning bush as the as a spiritual connection just like they saw the burning bush or just as they saw miracles in the past this is how they want to come across they are not God beings but they do speak for God Wonderful. Thank you for letting me know that. Very much. They are very happy that th you were able to connect with them in some way. And this is very exciting that I was able to connect with them to let a lot of people know what they were trying to say. That made them very happy. Wonderful. Much love to you, Akesh. Much love to you, of course. Akesh, okay, there question. is one more question for you from There's Ada. There's a question here as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll let them go over there and then we'll, we'll come back over here. What is your question? Hi, Barbara here. My question is I was laying on a couch one evening and I was looking at a table, a small table across my room with some items on it. For some reason it came to my mind that they're going to fall off. So when I closed my eyes I heard a noise and some of them fell off. Was I being visited by my cat or somebody else? No. You you had a premonition. You had, um, did you hear what she had said? Did you hear her? Yes. Oh, very well. I did not know. Her voice is rather soft. So I just wanted to make sure you heard before I answered. No, this, you have a lot of visitors around your place. Um, uh, what is Spirico is there, isn't he? 
Um, Spirico is a, a reptilian, um, but he is an archaeologist, anthropologist. He studies uh, humanity. He studies Earth artifacts. He studies Earth in every way, actually. So you could put many hats on him when it comes to Earth study. Um, and he is a reptilian, but he is around your area a lot. And plus you have a Yu-Gi-Oh! And you have a couple other beings that are around your house. And they just wanted you to know, they let you know ahead of time, that they were going to do this so that you would know for sure that they were there. Okay. Because I've seen other things move too. Yes, okay. absolutely. They were just letting her know that they are there and they they are actually protecting you. Okay. So, so, and they are actually trying to help you out of your uh, low, mm -hmm. low thoughts. And with that, they are also trying to bring a little bit of health. They're, by changing the atmosphere of the room. Now would smudging with the um, sage help with that energy in the room? Yes, it would, but they're changing it vibrationally in their own way. But smudging is also another way, if there's anything negative there, the smudging would take care of the negativity, whereas they're working with vibrations of third dimension. What can I do to help myself to move past that negativity? Um, I think that things are happening already. Okay. You were negative entities were removed. Perfect. I can see where they were, and now things are coming to f fill those spaces. Okay. That that is more positive, and they're working on that with the vibration of the room. Okay. And so that will that will be very good. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Ah, he, she said to tell them thank you, and I do. Thank you very much. Hey, and what is it that you wanted to say there? Continue. I don't know if she can hear. Hi. Oh, there she is. Hi, look Hello, who am I? Ah, it's a day? Yeah. Yeah, it's a day. Look at ah, hello. Hello, very nice to meet you. You're so lovely. Um, ah, yes, I, I can read. It says a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question is, um, okay, first, do the guides that are around me have any messages for me? Because I've been feeling really low energetically lately, and I don't know if there is reason for that. Yes, there is. Let me explain to you. I believe that the earth energies are really tumultuous at the moment. Not in the sense that they're rising high above the earth, but they're rumbling around and moving since the solstice and uh, finding their perfect place in Gaia. And there are so many things with fourth dimensional energies. It's, it's bringing up all kinds of low energy, high energy, some people are going through a roller coaster ride of emotions right now. So do not really fear that. It will even out. So, uh, but that is part of what is happening. The other part with you is that you're going through a change. Your, th your thought processes are changing. You're preparing for things that you don't really want to do, but do you know that you have to do? Is that correct? Yes. There are some things that I'm not looking forward to. Yes. And that is why that you are feeling this way. Let, it, let comfort come to you because it is not going to be as bad as you think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will do my best with that. Um, do you uh, are you able to connect to my guides and see if they have any like short messages for me at the moment? One moment, please. Thank you. Just this. Be very perceptive at this time. Find the right times for the right words. 
because some of these things that you have to do and say that you don't want to do will be best done at the most appropriate time and you're going to sense with your perception when those times are find it out of love out of your heart because there are moments that are greater than others for these things and when you do approach these different peoples or different situations make sure you start with a great deal of love and some devotion and some prayers before you even go into that situation because they're saying that this will help this will bring about a new a, a little bit of change in the atmosphere so that you will be more more able to uh, get the information across in the most beautiful way possible beautiful thank you so much Lakesh much love very very well you're very welcome it um, is nice meeting you as well thank you look Lakesh um, Lainid had asked if you could uh, maybe give her some tips or, or ideas for crystal or something to do more conscious astral travel one moment please I would have to connect to her energy to know exactly which stones and or what things would be best for her oh I know her information yes very good she needs um, tectite for one thing because that's an unearthly substance and it does have things in that are connected with off-world things. So tectite is one thing that she would need for a better astral travel. Do you, does she have tectite? If she does, she, she needs at least one more. Okay, I will tell her. Um, but that is the first thing that I would suggest. Also, with this tectite, I would put... I would get a couple of them actually. If she has two, that would be best. And put them together so that they can work in conjunction one to the, the other. Because what, uh, they could come from different parts of the universe, if you understand that. They have unearthly elements in them. So therefore, if they, if they come from two different areas of the sky, then it is helpful that they could work together to bring her to many different places. Also, to put her beliefs in that, she can travel much easier. She has a hard time believing the many things that have been said about her. Uh, and so, therefore, they will help her open her consciousness as well, let her see different parts of the universe, and help her to open herself. The other thing that will be helpful for Liney, for her particular self, you know, uh, by the way, tectite is good for everyone to use for astral travel because it does have elements of things from outside of the earthly realm. So that is helpful. Please give it a thought. Now, the other thing that will help her is Lumerian crystal. Okay. It's very directed. And it's very psychic for her. It will be helpful in her psychic energy. Did you have another question? And, and that would help her remember also? It would help her. The tech type will help with all the things of astral. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's part of, part of the thing. Because sometimes it's... Sometimes she remembers, but it's a bit foggy, or she only remember like one little thing, well, but not the entire thing. The Lumerian crystal will also clarify, help her to clarify those things that are that she saw. Okay. Um, Very well. There were more questions for you, Lakesh. <laughs> of course. Um, so, uh, Wendy, it's next. Wendy, hello. Is that you, Wendy? You're looking a bit yellow today. <laughs> I Actually, you answered quite a bit of my Yes, what else is there? Question. 
question. So the energies that you spoke of, um, I've also been feeling a great deal of very odd energies this week. And yeah. um, I don't know if it's me personally. I wanted to ask also um, if the solar, recently we had a very giant solar flare that I, I understand was probably one of the the most, um, you know, highest one we have have had or ever had and I didn't know if that was part of what might be affecting us. Um, well let me tell you this, the Venusians have put a protection against some solar flares up uh, against the earth. Well ag against from their planet from they have a certain shielded area for that is blocking some of the uh, solar flares. Now this solar flare wasn't facing Earth. It was coming out to the side, I believe, of your uh, of the sun. But it still had a great deal of energy to it, a great deal of effect on your planet. And yes, a little bit of that energy is still uh, hanging around there, of course. Okay, I was just curious if it had any substantial it, effect. It, um, but it wasn't directly <clears throat> toward the Earth, or it was off to the side. And actually, it's a good thing that it wasn't faith that it doesn't didn't come off yes. directly toward the Earth. And that would have been actually rather disastrous, or it could have been. But of course, the Venusians are blocking some of those solar energies. <laughs> And in addition to this, this energy is coming toward the Earth. Um, a few years ago, um, I, I feel very connected to the Shikani over soul energy and the Yael energy as well. And I've been feeling over the last couple of years, and especially lately, Bashar mentioned something about the mass concentrations of <clears throat> like Shikani energy, like uh, unification type of love coming off of the Earth, uh, excuse me, off of the moon's moonlight. Um, through through the Shikani Oversoul energy, and I'm wondering, yeah. I'm wondering if you could tell me, am I feeling that right now? I seem to get a lot of telepathic messages from that. Yeah. One moment, please. I can actually change the atmosphere in your room right now and let you feel what that would have felt like. Um, one moment, please. I just have to exchange a couple crystals here. Is that the energy that you felt? See if you can connect to it. Yes, very much so. Very good. Yes, there, is, there are many messages coming from the moon because there are many species there. Well, I shouldn't say many, but about four or five. Um, there are, and, they, and they are uh, communicating to the earth. They are watching the earth. They're communicating one with another. And a couple of them are not so not such good entities, actually. Um, and they have hollowed out areas of the moon so that they can look actually straight through from the backside to the front. Um, they've offset the weight somehow so that it doesn't change orbital status. So it is a very interesting time because the moon does have a lot of extra energy that it is giving off. Teacher. Okay. Okay, thank you. I feel as if I've been there actually. You have projected yourself there. Yes. Um, Wendy, are you done? Okay, we don't hear you. Yes, she's gone. Okay, so uh, on that note, I want to say thank you, Lakesh, for coming and answering all our questions. Yes, for... I stayed much longer than I thought I would. I know, but thank you for being here, um, for giving of your time with us, and we welcome you anytime you want to come. Thank you. There's another question in the room. Oh, okay. I have a question. 
Yeah. Some information. Can you divulge that information to me, or is that something I have to learn to divulge myself? One moment, please. Let me attach myself to that. Think of it. Oh, it is not time for that information yet. Okay. So therefore, no. Okay. I cannot tell you what it says. But there is information there, yes. Very well. I am on my way then. Thank you. Much love and Much love. Namaste. Namaste. I tried to control my hands today. You did very well, Lakesh. How is yes, your grandchild? I, I, I started to do my thing and then all of a sudden I said, Oh no, 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 no. Jim how doesn't is, like that when I do that. How's your grandchild, Lakesh? Oh, she is marvelous. Absolutely terrific. And growing so beautifully and so intelligent and poetic, just like her grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, another question in the room. Yes. I wanted to know how the injuries are coming along in, that had happened to me in the head. Ah, he wanted to know how his injuries were. That is a long story. But they are coming along very nicely. You are able to deal with fear a much better. And it will continue to be that way. Yes. All righty then. It is about time for me question. to go. Thank you. Oh, was there another question? Yes, I have a small question. Go ahead. Um, is there so many messages from my guides? Because uh, I'm leaving Sweden in like maybe a month. Why in a moment? Where are you going? I'm going somewhere else in Europe. <laughs> ah! They said, hold on. It will be a cultural change for you, but it would at first you will be it will be hard to meet new friends, but after a certain time you will be very welcomed and it will be a beautiful change. But do not expect that right away. They will have to see you and understand you first. And same with you, you will be hesitant to move out to meet new people at first. But do not be surprised if you make some very wonderful friends in the near future. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. And I will go now. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Takur. Um, um, <laughs> Lakesh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Lakesh. I, I do not sound like Takur, do I? No, do, you do not at all. <laughs> I will let her know, though. She is very much, uh, we are very good friends. Yes. Yes, we look alike, I guess. <laughs> from here, from where you are. Yeah, from so. this point of view. <laughs> but not in person. We're quite different. Oh, my goodness. I am small, and she is very large. So I am smaller than you are. So, um, so to me, she's a gigantic. But anyway, do you have a blessing? A blessing? Someone said, Do I have a blessing? One moment, please. Quit a chwats foot in chup. Quit your chuwakats. Nipt chup a cock chua ah. I skip yet a two the rota opa as a diat a woods. Nen get out you out at it. Yes. May all the wonderful things of the spirit be with you. May your path always be bright. May you always understand that negativity is there so that positivity looks more glorious. May you feel light and beautiful, and may your way be smoother this week. I love you dearly, and I want all the best for you, in spirit and in the third dimension, and any other 
dimension that you would happen to visit. Much love. Much love, Rakesh. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hi. Wow, that was cool. It was like cash. I could feel him. Yes, it was Lakesh. He didn't move yes. his hands too much. <laughs> he tried not to. Yes, I, I felt him a few times, and I was going, careful, careful. <laughs> uh, he was a good boy today, I think. Very yes. good. He was, he was very good. Um, so I lost track of it a couple times, so I don't know what he's doing then. Oh, no, he, he just gets really out of control with them sometimes. So... Him and Shell. Shell's the other one. So. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you want to try and bring somebody else. We still have some time. Alrighty, very good. Let me see who's there. I am Solomon. Okay. Greetings. I came, I came here once before, but there was no one to speak to me. Welcome. Thank Today you. there's someone here who has, who has asked you in the past. How are you? I see. Who am I speaking to? Uh, my name is Shir. I'm from Israel. Very well. Speak. Well, I have many, many questions. I don't think we have the time. Um, Ask me the important ones. <laughs> um, well, there are so many questions for you. I will try to pick one. Did you really spoke in every language, including the languages of the animals? When I was alive on your planet? Yes, after the that Elohim is. gave you abilities. Yes, there was many abilities that I was given on Earth toward the end of my life. And speaking to the animals was one of them because there was a purpose for that. I needed to understand what the animals were thinking and doing around the kingdom. They were also a little bit like spies and they would tell me what the people were thinking and doing. So that I could understand how to govern them better. Is it true that you had um, 10,000 women or 1,000 women if I'm not mistaken? That has been exaggerated. I had 850. Or perhaps a few more or a few less. That is the general number. And the interaction that you had with the Elohim, when they spoke with you after you've been uh, coordinated to be a king, and they ask you, what do you want for your reign? And you ask them to have a good heart to, just, uh, to, that <clears throat> to judge the people right. And they like yes, to I ask them for... I asked them for great wisdom and understanding of the people and how to reign fairly and purely over such a large group. And they did give me that. And there are many examples of what the gift that they gave me as I used it with the people. And 
when you interacted with them, did you know that they were the Elohim or uh, us Jews? We I knew uh, that they were an element of God, and so therefore my ears were open. Okay, and last question, because I see that other people want to speak with you. It's about the famous story about the two women and the child. The yeah. child. Did you really suggest that to cut the baby to half and bring each of them half of the baby? And when do you know the rest? Yes, I know. One claimed to be the mother, well, both claimed to be the mother of the child, but only one was the mother. And therefore, my thought was this. If I would offer them each half because they did not want to relent, each one said it was their child, and they said, we want the, our baby. If I gave them half each, then that would be fair. They, the real mother then said, no, let her have the child because she did not want her child cut in half. So she let the, the woman that was not the child's mother have the child. But then I knew that the mother would react that way. And therefore, I gave the child to the woman who said, do not cut the child in half, because that was the tr true mother. Uh, and one last question. Do you have any messages for me? Do we know each other from other lifetimes? We know each other many lifetimes, yes. But I was not always a king. But being king was not as easy as you might think. Using wisdom and using your intelligence to make the best reign is not always e easy because there are many easy decisions to make if you're not thinking properly. Some decisions that seem easy are really very difficult. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I actually had a dream two days ago that one of my brothers, who is a prince, told me how hard it is for him. You had a dream that one of your brothers was a prince? No, one of my galactic brother, brothers is a prince, and he told me yeah. how hard it is for him sometimes. Oh, yes. It is difficult. That is true. Uh, thank you very, very much. It's an honor to speak with you. It is an honor to speak with you as well. I am surprised that anyone in this era would find it interesting to speak to me. <laughs> Hello, Solomon. This is Sarah. How are you? Sarah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I also have a question for you. What is our connection to each other? You were one of my first wives in that era. But we've known each other in other lives. You were wife number six. But we, you were one of my favorites. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I had several favorites, but I remember you. Also, we were together in many scenarios on the earth before Christ was born, and only once after, and that was in 300 AD, 312 AD. It was and not the best Shiva? life together. You were one of my children in that life and it was not the happiest of lives because the conditions of the earth were not that great at that time and there was some famine but we managed to survive and the, and live to fairly good ages for that period of in history yes um was it you who connected with Shiva? I connected with Shiva, yes. Yes. Um, 
Do you know of my connection with Sheba then? I know that you have one, but I do not know all about it. Ah. Because now I'm thinking maybe I had two. There were two fractals during that time period. And she it was one. It's very possible, yes. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Um, I, this is Stephanie, um, if I may. I just wanted to ask a, a follow-up question to that. Thank you. There was um, apparently a book, there's a book that's referred to as the Keber Negest that the Ethiopian people have as their holy scriptures that is said to be a book of scriptures that you gave to the the son that um, that you had with the Queen of Sheba is that correct accurate yes there is I did not give it to them to be you to use it as a Bible but just as a guide but it it is still in existence I understand and yes, it was important for me to give direction and wisdom after I was gone so that those that came after me would understand that it is important to can continue to use power in a wise and careful way. Thank you so much. They still quite reverence that those scriptures that you gave to them. Thank there you. are many holy scriptures on this planet, some greater than the others, but none of them are purely true. There has been errors made in transcription on um, all of them. I understand. Thank you. Um, hello, Solomon. This is Sabrina. Greetings. Um, I just have a question if I was wondering if you could uh, give us any words of wisdom as to you know there are many things to come towards the end of the year um, and I was wondering if, if you could speak about that or, or um, ways for us to, to handle what is to come. You have been given many advices and to add to that would just be more confusing. For me, silence is the greatest wisdom for that at this time. There will be others to speak about this, for they are more involved in it than I am. I okay. do see it. I do not necessarily understand it all, but I do see what is coming. And so, as someone who is said to be wise, I will be wise by not speaking. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Wendy? Oh, thank you. Hello, Solomon. Um, I'm asking a question actually for a few of us. Myself, Bianca, and Amran are all together here, I believe, in this room. And we feel a deep connection to you and the jinn, and we were wondering if perhaps you could elaborate on that for us, and what our connection might be to you and the jinn, and to each other in that way. Well, that is an interesting question because I have connections to many people that are alive right now, and the and the jinn is mysterious and it is that which is coming back with some of these energies do you understand that yes and I'd like to ask if you could elaborate on that because many people have a very um, negative view of the jinn and I think I'd like to clarify that a little I bit do because I don't be, I don't feel I that see it is not a negative thing that the jinn is returning in a, a force that will be greater than what it has been. The jinn will be helping humanity with a trans 
uh, mutant or trans. Uh, it's moving. It's going to transition. That is the word. The jinn will help to transition the energies of the earth into the future energies that they are, which are more magical, more... They are scientific still. Scientific can explain magic. Do you understand that? But you just don't know how to connect it. But it will help to transition magic and science into one thought process, as you may know magic to be something of uh, off-world sort of energies that do not exist in your plane at this time, but they actually do exist now. Magic is returning. Now, your communication and contact with the jinn is of a positive nature. You are just ahead of the game, knowing that that energy is to be used and is going to be a very interesting force in the future. Let your people know, and let those that are also acquainted with the jinn, that it can be used negatively, and that that is why some look at it that way. In the past, in the darker ages, of your planet. It has been used in a negative and very disturbing way. However, if you, if you are the first to encounter it, then you shall bring a positive gist to it and bring it forth in a positive way. Of course, there will be those that understand that it can be used in a negative way but let not give them the full energy of it. Let it be more positive. Let the full energy of it, or the fuller energy of it, be that of positivity. Thank you. That's, <clears throat> that's exactly what I was feeling. Exactly. Thank you. You might want to explain to some people what the jinn is. I think that some of them do not know. I got question marks on some of their faces. Yes, perhaps you could give a more clear explanation than I can, but my understanding is just simply that they were of had magical abilities and that they were um, of the genie. They are the over well, the over soul, if you will, of the genie. The Jenna? That would be, you see, I wouldn't even know how to present it in exactly. this day. I don't know how to explain it. This kind of people. But yes, they were considered genies. The ones that would probably come out of the lanterns. However, that is a fallacy. They exist in space and time and not in lanterns but they do have energies of their own and can grant vibrational wishes that can come true. Now, that part of them has been questioned many times. Do genies really give wishes? Do genies really exist? The answer is yes, but let's not use them for that means any longer. That's, that is actually more of a negative use of their skills and abilities. You can use them to help the earth move forward in a greater way. Help them in a combined energy with many people. Do not be selfish and ask for your own gifts from them. Does that sound better? Thank you. That was a perfect answer. Thank you. You're welcome. I am told that I must go now. Yeah. So thank you, Solomon. Um, we will welcome a blessing if you would like to do one. I am not one that is good with blessings. Okay. However, I can bring one in that is. We all have our talents. 
That is not one of mine. But I will bring in someone that will. Okay, thank you. Shalom. Namaste. Ah. There is blessings for all of you here. The love and the light will bless and be on you today and for many days hence. Know that the burning trees have sent their energy of love and light to you. They are grateful that you have opened your hearts to hear them, for their messages come from higher places. God himself trusts them with his words to send to others. Let us pray for this coming time that it be more peaceful than it has been predicted, that it be more loving and have a greater meaning in a positive way than it is being brought forth to be. Let us bring it to you in a way that it is a learning situation and not just negativity. Let us bring it to you in a way that will bring you up and help you be stronger in the future and not just see it as a slap or a bring down. Let us look at this time in this near future as a blessing and not a curse. We love you dearly and we know that all of you have some kind of protection on you and we are just asking God now to reinforce that protection, reinforce his love on you, his light, and bring you through all things victoriously. We love you, and we give you many, many blessings. Stay positive. Stay lighted. Bring forth the great things that are necessary for this world to move forward and connect closer and more meaningfully to God. Thank you. Namaste. And Namaste. I will may do I? my blessing uh, also. I'm sorry. Hold on, may Sarah. I Hold on, Sarah. I wanted to ask who was speaking. Yes, but let me do my blessing. And then you can ask. What? Um, today I will bring God's light source energy to me. Today God will be the center of me and I will be in the center of God. Today I will ponder upon His grace over me and I will seek Him in every conversation, in every thought, in every light, in every being. Today, I will know who I am. Sarah, you can ask your question. Um, has the being disconnected? I am still here. Thank you for staying. Who is speaking, please? I am Eleki. Eleki. I am representing the three people of Kornsata. Kornsata. Is that a species or a... Collective? That would be your pronunciation. The tree people exist in many places, but this is the farthest 
and most evolved of the three people. Thank you for connecting in this way. And are yeah. you the one I saw today? No. That was a great leader. I am but the prayer princess. I tell the prayers to you because I intercede for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blessings to you. Blessings. Thank you for your blessing and for coming. Thank you. Namaste. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for that, Jim. Wow. Thank you, Jim. Have a great day. Remember, next week is <laughs> Ivan, I believe. And then after that, I'm not sure. I yes. will be talking to Sabrina and some of others of you to see who is up for uh, the following week after Ivan. Yes. Um, I would also like to mention um, my webinar tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern and it is on emotions and fear of feeling your emotions. Oh, okay. So, so I welcome Very everybody cool. um, to, to come. Cool. And uh, I would also like to mention um, a channeling I did of the Elohim and it's on the self, I think it would be very helpful for everyone. Cool. So. All right, very good. Is it on the website? Is it on the website? I will post it on the website. Put it on the Ucolo stuff, yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming, for being here. Please, uh, if this benefits you in any way, um, please donate to a human colony. Um, it helps things keep going. It helps pay for the website. Um, and and it you know helps Jim, it helps Max. So thank you everyone. Thank you for the volunteers for the work that you do. Um, I want to thank everyone for that. And um, please be here next week. Ivan will be channeling, um, so and it will be at the uh, at the usual place, and uh, it would also be twenty five, right, Mark? Um, I'm not going to be available next weekend, so okay. if you can do the twenty five, great. But I won't be able to back you up. Okay, all right. So um, we will speak with Ivan and coordinate with him, but uh, please do. You know, support him. All right. Okay, Thank you, everyone. Good. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Sabrina. Bye, Thank you, Jim. Excellent.